Chapter 7 Jerry Muskrat Makes a Discovery By the way, Sharon the turtle enjoys these stories too. She comes and hangs out at this corner of her aquarium. The beautiful springtime had brought a great deal of happiness to the smiling pool, as it had to the green meadows and to the green forest. Great Grandfather Frog, who had slept the long winter away in his own special bed way down in the mud, had waked up with an appetite so great that for a while it seemed as if he could think of nothing but his stomach. Jerry Muskrat had felt the spring fever in his bones and had gone up and down the laughing brook, poking into all kinds of places just for the fun of seeing new things. Little Joe Otter had been more full of fun than ever, if that were possible. Mr. and Mrs. Redwing had come back to the bulrushes from their winter home way down in the warm Southland. Everybody was happy, just as happy as could be. One morning, one sunny morning, Jerry Muskrat sat on the big rock in the middle of the smiling pool, just thinking of how happy everybody was and laughing at little Joe Otter, who was cutting up all sorts of capers in the water. Suddenly, Jerry's sharp eyes saw something that made him wrinkle his forehead in a puzzled frown, and look and look at the opposite bank. Finally, he called to Little Joe Otter. Hi, Little Joe, come over here, shouted Jerry. What for? asked Little Joe, turning a somersault in the water. I want you to see if there's anything wrong with my eyes, replied Jerry. Little Joe Otter stopped swimming and stared up at Jerry Muskrat. They look all right to me, said he, as he started to climb up on the big rock. Of course they look all right, replied Jerry, but what I want to know is if they see all right. Look over at that bank. Little Joe Otter looked over at the bank. He stared and stared, but he didn't see anything unusual. It looked just as it always did. He told Jerry Muskrat so. But it must be my eyes, sighed Jerry. It certainly must be my eyes. It looks to me as if the water does not come up as high on the bank as it did yesterday. Little Joe Otter looked again and his eyes opened wide. You are right, Jerry Muskrat, he cried. There is nothing the matter with your eyes. The water is as low as it ever gets, even in the very middle of summer. What can it mean? I don't know, replied Jerry Muskrat. It is queer. It certainly is very queer. Let's go ask Grandfather Frog. You know, he is very old and very wise, so perhaps he can tell us what it means. Splash! Jerry Muskrat and Little Joe Otter dived into the smiling pool and started a race to see who could reach Grandfather Frog first. He was sitting among the bulrushes on the edge of the smiling pond, where the lily pads were not yet big enough for him to sit on comfortably. Oh, Grandfather Frog, what's the matter with the smiling pool? They shouted as they came up quite out of breath. Chugarum, there's nothing the matter with the smiling pool. It's the best place in all the world, replied Grandfather Frog gruffly. But there is something the matter, insisted Jerry Muskrat, and then he told what he had discovered. I don't believe it, said Grandfather Frog. I never heard of such a thing in the springtime. Chapter 8. Grandfather Frog Watches His Toes Grandfather Frog sat among the bulrushes on the edge of smi the smiling pool. Over his head, Mr. Redwing was singing as if his heart would burst with the very joy of springtime. tra la la lee see me, see me, happy am I as I can be, happy am I the whole day long, and so I sing my gladsome song. Of course Mr. Redwing was happy. Why shouldn't he be? Here it was, the beautiful springtime, the gladdest time of all the year, the time when happiness creeps into everybody's heart. Grandfather Frog listened. He nodded his head. chug -a I'm happy too, said Grandfather Frog. But even as he said it, a little worried look crept into his big ugly eyes, and then down to the corners of his big mouth which had been stretched in a smile. Little by little, the smile grew smaller and smaller until there wasn't any smile. No, sir, there wasn't any smile. Instead of looking happy as he said he felt, Grandfather Frog actually looked unhappy. The fact is, he couldn't forget what Jerry Muskrat and Little Joe Otter had told him. 
that there was something the matter with the smiling pool. He didn't believe it, not a word of it. At least he tried to make himself think that he didn't believe it. They had said that the water in the smiling pool was growing lower and lower, just as it did in the middle of summer, in the very hottest weather. Now, Grandfather Frog is very old and very wise, and he had never heard of such a thing happening in the springtime, so he wouldn't believe it now. And yet, and yet Grandfather Frog had an uncomfortable feeling that something was wrong. Ha! He knew now what it was. He had been sitting up to his middle in water, and now he was sitting with only his toes in the water, and he couldn't remember having changed his position. Of course, I moved without thinking what I was doing, muttered Grandfather Frog. But still, the worried look didn't leave his face. You see, he just couldn't make himself believe what he wanted to believe, try as he would. chug -a I know what I'll do. I'll watch my toes, exclaimed Grandfather Frog. So Grandfather Frog waded out into the water until it covered his feet, and then he sat down and began to watch his toes. Mr. Redwing looked down and saw him, and Grandfather Frog looked so funny gazing at his own toes that Mr. Redwing stopped singing long enough to ask, What are you doing, Grandfather Frog? Watching my toes, replied Grandfather Frog gruffly. Watching your toes! Ho, ho, ho! Watching your toes! Who ever heard of such a thing? Are you afraid that they will run away, Grandfather Frog? shouted Mr. Redwing. <laughs> Grandfather Frog didn't answer. He kept right on watching his toes. Mr. Redwing flew away to tell everybody he met how Grandfather Frog had become foolish and was watching his toes. The sun shone down warm and bright, and pretty soon Grandfather Frog's big goggly eyes began to blink. Then his head began to nod. Why? Then Grandfather Frog fell fast asleep. By and by, Grandfather Frog awoke with a start. He looked down at his toes. They were not in the water at all. Indeed, the water was a good long jump away. chug there is something wrong with the smiling pool, cried Grandfather Frog, as he made a long jump in the water and started to swim out to the big rock. <laughs>